What's up everybody? Got another video here for you. This one's on line integrals. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's look at this. We've got uh, if f is a if f is defined on a smooth curve C given by the parametric equation x equal x of t, y equals y of t, and t is between a and b, then the line integral of f along C is the integral and we use a c right here to represent the the curve for the line integral f of x y ds which is which is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity sum i equals one to n of f of x star sub i y star sub i times delta s sub i if this limit exists the lengths delta s i are of sub arcs of C and the points, these points are sample points in the ith sub arc. All right, so basically what we've got here is we've got a curve here and what we're doing is we're breaking it up into little arcs. I mean, they're, they're tiny arcs and then we're summing it all up. And I'll, I'll do my best to draw and explain what we're finding with the well i can explain it but i'll do my best to draw it uh what we're finding so uh if you recognize back when you did arc length okay remember when you did the arc length it says using the formula for the length of c we can write the integral of f of x, y, ds over the curve c is the integral from a to b f of x, t, y of t times the square root of dx, dx dt squared plus dy dt squared and then we're going to integrate with respect to t. All right, so, so what we're doing is you understand here we're looking in the x, y plane, okay? And you have this curve on the xy plane. And above the curve, now the z axis would be coming straight at you. Okay? Off your screen, it would be coming straight at you. And there would be some kind of surface up there. Okay? And then this curve here is projected onto that surface. And if you take that curve that's projected on the surface and there's going to be like a, a sheet like if you take it took a piece of paper and folded it into the shape of that curve and and that sheet went all the way down to the x y axis what you're doing is you're finding the area of that sheet okay it's it's i mean it's hard to draw in 3d i i'll attempt it but i doubt if i'm going to be able to draw it very good all right so so you got some surface up here okay and then you've got some some curve down here okay and then this curve here would be projected up here on this surface okay and then you see this sheet right here you're you're finding the area of that that's what you're finding. It's just along that curve. Okay. And that that's your that's your line integral. So let's go ahead and look at some examples. And and you know, keep in mind this is our formula right here. All right. So it says uh, evaluate the integral over the curve C. 2 plus x squared y ds, where c is the upper half of the unit circle x squared plus y squared equals 1. All right, so, you know, if you make a just a quick sketch of this, you've got the upper half of a circle. That's negative 1. That's 1. There's your circle. Now, remember, we want to get uh, parametric equations. And if you remember, I don't remember what section it is, but it was in an earlier section, I think in chapter 10 in the Stewart book. Uh, remember, parametric equations for the circle, 
would be x equal cosine t, y equal sine t. All right. So there's your circle written in parametric equations. And look what, and see, that's what we're going to, we got to find f of x t. We got to find f of x t, y t. Well, there's your x t, there's your y of t. All right. And then we need the derivative. So we've got dx dt is equal to negative sine t and dy dt is equal to cosine t. All right. And so now all we're going to do is plug this stuff in. So we've got the integral over C the integral over C of 2 plus x squared y ds is equal to the integral from 0 to pi see we're just the upper half of the circle so we're going from 0 to pi alright and that's going to be 2 plus now x is cosine, so that's cosine squared t, and then y is sine times sine t. All right, and then times the square root of d of x t squared, or not d of x, dx dt squared. Well, dx dt squared, if you take negative sine t and square it, that's going to give you sine squared t plus, and then we've got dy dt squared. So if you take dy dt and square it, cosine, that's going to be cosine squared t, and then we're integrating with respect to t. And so this is going to give us 0 to pi. And remember, this right here, that's just 1. Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. And that's going to be 2 plus cosine squared t sine t dt. All right, so to integrate this thing, uh, I, I hope you can... Uh, I hope you can see how we're going to have to integrate this. We're going to integrate this one, and then we're going to integrate this one. So you know this is going to be 2t. All right, that's 2t. Now, I'm going to do this on this one real quick, but I'm not going to explain a whole lot of it because you should know how to do it, but I'm just going to review it with you just in case. So this would be u substitution. You would let u equal what? Cosine t. And then du is negative sine t dt. So we need a negative here because we got a negative sine t dt. So that means we'd have to multiply by a negative out there. So that would be negative. And then we make our substitution u squared du, which would be negative one third u cubed uh, plus c. I mean, obviously, we're not going to put the C because we've got bounds on our integral. And so this would be negative one-third cosine cubed T plus C. And so for when we integrate this part, you can do the U substitution. I don't. You may can do it in your head, and if you can, that's fine. All right, minus one-third cosine cubed T, and that's going from zero to pi. All right, and so now we get 2 pi minus 1 third cosine cubed pi minus uh, 2 times 0 minus 1 third cosine cubed uh, cosine cubed 0. And when you uh, do all those calculations, you get 2 pi plus 2 thirds. And there's your answer. All right. So, I mean, all you're doing is, you know, 
once you get your parametric equations, you just plug it into here. That's that's all you're doing. It's it's really not that it's not that difficult. All right, let's look at the next example. Well, let's look at this one first. Suppose that C is a piecewise smooth curve. That is, C is a union of a fin finite number of smooth curves C1, C2, Cn, whereas illustrated in the figure, I'll show you the figure in a minute, the initial point of C sub i plus 1 is the terminal point of C sub i. Then we define the integral of f along c as the sum of integrals of f along each of the smooth pieces of c. So, so basically what you're doing is you're doing the same thing that we did up here. It's, it's, it's just that we may have several curves that are kind of broken up. It's just not one, you know, it's not one equation that represents the curve. It may be represented as multiple equations. And so basically all they're saying is you break it up. Okay, piecewise. Remember piecewise functions. Um, and so here it is. You would just evaluate each integral individually and then you sum them up. And here this would be an example. See here you have a curve and then so you would have to calculate this one, then you would have to calculate the curve the C two and then C three, C four and then C five. And once you did all that, you would just add all those up. Alright? And you know, obviously that's that's quite a that's quite a bit. <clears throat> you know five of them but you know you may have two or three and so let's look at this it says evaluate the integral over the curve c dx ds where c consists of the arc c1 of the parabola y equals x squared from 0 0 to 1 1 followed by the vertical line segment c2 from 1 1 to 1 2 all right, so let's just make a little sketch of this, kind of see what we have here. And so we've got the parabola here from 0, 0 to 1, 1. And then we have a straight line going from 1, 1 to 1, 2. All right, so this would be 1, 1 and this would be 1, 2, and this would be our C1, and that would be our C2. All right, now let's go ahead and, and see what we have here. All right, so we need our functions, okay? Now, if you notice in, in this problem, We've got, oh well, and let's label this point where it starts, zero, zero. <clears throat> All right, so if you notice here, we have y equals x squared. So notice we're already in, y is already in terms of a variable. It's in terms of x. If you notice in the problem before, what did we have? Now, th what I'm fixing to write down does not, relate to this problem. But remember in the last problem whoop, we had x squared plus y squared equals 1. So you know you had a function in terms of x and y. Okay I mean you could solve for y but then you would get your you know once you solve for y you would get your plus or minus and all that stuff. But this this function here it's y equals x. So how about we just say x is equal to x and then we have y is equal to x squared and we can see that x is between 0 and 1. Say we're going from this one to this. So we're going from 0 to 1 on the x-axis. And so if we take the derivative with respect to x, we've got dx the derivative of x with respect to x is 1, and the derivative of y with respect to x is 2x. And so now we can write 
Now remember, this is for curve C1. So we've got the integral over the curve C1 of 2x ds is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of 2x, x is just equal to x, and then times the square root of, let's see, where are we? dx, dx, dx squared, so that's 1 squared, plus dy dx squared, so 2x squared is 4x squared dx. So, so basically what we did here is this is dx dx squared plus dy dx squared. Okay, we're in terms of x, we didn't put it in terms of t. All right. <clears throat> All right, so now let's go ahead and integrate this. Well, yeah. And I'm going to change this one square. I'm just going to change the one square to a one. All right, so we would let u equal uh, one plus four x squared. So du is eight x dx. So we've got a two here. We need an eight. So if I multiply by eight, I can come out here and multiply by one eighth. And so this is going to give me. This is going to give me one fourth. Where did I get the one fourth? I took the two, taking the two and bringing it out. I just didn't write an extra step to bring the two out. So two over eight gives me one fourth. And so you can see I have the integral, and that's going to be u to the one half, right? U to the one half. I replaced the 1 plus 4x squared with u, and then the 8x dx, 8x dx, I'm replacing with du. And so then I'm going to get u equals uh, 1 plus 4 times, times 0 squared equals 1, and u equals 1 plus 4 times 1 squared, which is equal to 5. So I'm going from 1 to 5. Remember, if you when you do your u sub, you have to change your bounds too. Remember that. So this is going to be one fourth u to the three halves times two thirds from one to five, which is equal to one sixth times five to the three halves minus one to the three halves. And so we're going to get one sixth times five to the three halves minus one. So that's, that's our area for C1, okay? All right, now let's look at C2. Now for C2, uh, what can we do here? Well, notice here for C2, now we're not on this curve anymore, we're on this curve. You see that? So this curve here that tells me that what? That tells me x is equal to 1. I'm going to draw a line here so you can see we're working on C2 now. The top of the, above the line is C1, below the line is C2. Remember, that's just x equal 1, right? That's that curve. And then we can say that y is equal to y because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what, what y is, right? It doesn't matter what y is. Because anywhere on this line, regardless what y is, x is what? 1. And we are going to go from 1 to 2. See, y is going from here to here, 1 to 2. 1 to 2. All right, so now we're going to differentiate with respect to y. So I get dx dy equals 0, and dy dy is equal to 1. All right, so now I get the integral over C2, 2x ds is equal to the integral 1 to 2 of, let's see, what is that? 
that's going to be 2x and what's let's just write it out 2 times 1 right I'm taking the 1 and plugging it in for x times the square root of dx dy squared so that's 0 squared plus dy dy squared so plus 1 squared once again this integral here that's dx dy squared plus dy dy squared that's where that's where that came from and then we're integrating with respect to y and so this is going to give me the integral from 1 to 2 of 2 dy that's all it is because this is 1 all right so this is going to be 2y from 1 to 2 which obviously you can see that's 2. so we have the integral over the curve c of 2x ds is equal to the curve c1 over the curve c1 2x ds plus the integral over the curve c2 2x ds which is equal to well that was over the curve c1 1 6 times 5 to the 3 halves minus 1 minus what we got for integrating over curve c2 which is 2 ah I'm sorry not minus plus and there's your answer okay so this one we didn't need to put it in parametric equations okay we had a function we we had our functions see it was it was a function in terms of x all right all right let's look at the next one All right, it says suppose that rho of xy represents the linear density at a point xy of a thin wire shaped like a curve C. Then the mass m of the wire is given by m is equal to, and then you can write, it can be written as a limit, but it's the integral over the curve C of rho of xy ds. The center of mass of the wire with density function rho is located at the point x bar y bar where x bar is 1 over m times the integral over the curve c x rho of x y ds and y bar is 1 over m times the integral over the curve c y times y rho of x y ds okay so it's, it's similar to what you did uh, earlier okay in another class in your I know you I think you did it in either calc 1 or calc 2 you did center of mass and then you probably uh, I don't know what other class you did it in but anyway uh, you did it before okay all right so let's look at this example it says a wire takes the shape of a semicircle x squared plus y squared equals 1 where y is positive greater than or equal to 0 and it's thicker near its base than near the top find the center of mass of the wire if the linear density at any point is proportional to its distance from the line <laughs> y equals 1 all right, so we can make a little sketch of this. And so you got your semicircle. You're going from negative 1 to 1. And, you know, I'm not going to be able to draw this good, but it's, it's thicker as it gets to the bottom. They're talking about right here, and then it, it thins out. It's, I don't know, something like that. Okay, but that's, that's what it looks like. All right, so we know we have x is equal to cosine t, y equals sine t, and we know that t is between 0 and pi. All right, so we also, we know we're going to need dx dt 
that's negative sine t. And we've got dy dt is equal to cosine t. And the derivative of cosine is negative sine t. All right, so we need our function that we're integrating, okay? So we need, we need rho of xy. Now, what does it say? It's proportional to its distance from the line y equals 1. Okay, so that's going to be k times. So if, you're, if it's the distance from the line y equals 1. So just think about this. I'm going to come out here and do it so you can see it. If you have a point here, what is that distance right there? Well, we know this distance is y, so this distance here would be what? 1 minus y. And so it's k times 1 minus y. So there's your row of xy. And we, it's k times that because it says it is proportional to its distance from the line y equals 1. And so now we get m is equal to the integral over C of K times Y, 1 minus Y uh, DS, which is equal to the integral from 0 to pi of K times 1 minus Y times the square root. All right, so DX DT squared, so negative sine squared is sine squared T plus dx plus dy dt squared and I don't know if I said dy when I did sine but if I did I meant dx and that would be cosine squared t and that would be dt all right and so let's let's go ahead and rewrite this again I kind of screwed up a little bit k times 1 minus sine t times and then this is what one and then that would be dt well i didn't really screw up i had to write it again anyway because i had to show i'm just going to show you that just goes to one but don't forget i mean i i was going to do it anyway but don't forget for this you got to plug in the sine t because that's what y is all right and so Let's see, what do we get now? All right, so we're going to get what? When we integrate that, that's k, and I'm just going to leave the, pull the k out. k is a constant. That's going to be t, and then what's the antiderivative of negative, of, of sine t is negative cosine, and the negative and negative make a positive cosine t, and that's going to be from 0 to pi. And so that is going to give us k times pi plus sine, ah, plus cosine pi minus 0 plus cosine 0, which when you do all that figuring, you're going to get k equal, ah, you're going to get k times pi minus 2 because okay, that would be negative 1 that would be negative would be 1 with the minus so minus 1 minus 1 would be the minus 2 all right so there's m so now let's find y bar so that's going to be 1 over pi minus 1 over k times pi minus 2 that's a k it might look like an x but it's a k all right and that's going to be the integral over the curve c y times rho of x y ds which that's going to be so i'm going to come down here so i make sure i have enough room Well, let's, let's just do this. That's going to be 
the integral from 0 to pi of sine t times rho of xy. That's going to be times k times 1 minus y. And then, well, not 1 minus y, 1 minus sine t, right? We're, we're plugging in. So it's, remember, rho is 1 minus y, and we're taking the sine t and plugging it in for y. And then just like up here, I would have to, I would do in that square root of sine squared plus cosine squared. So it would be square root sine squared t plus cosine squared t dt. And so this is going to be k times the integral 0 to pi. I'm pulling the k out. That would be sine t minus sine squared t dt. All right. And then, of course, as we know, as before, that's 1. All right, so now to integrate that, you're going to have what? k times the integral 0 to pi of sine t minus, well, minus what? Minus 1 half times 1 minus cosine 2t dt. So remember, to integrate sine squared, you need to use your, your half angle identity. And so that's going to be k times integral 0 to pi of sine t minus 1 half plus 1 half cosine 2t dt. All right, and by now you should be able to integrate this. Oh, look what I did. Look what I did. Ah, uh, right here. 1 over k times pi minus 2. I forgot to bring that down with me. All right. And then when I pull the k out. Oh, wait a minute. Let's see. Hang on. All right. So let's see. Yeah, we've got 1 over k times pi minus 2. And then this k and this k is going to cancel. So I get 1 over pi minus 2. And so this is going to be 1 over pi minus 2. And this is going to be 1 over pi minus 2. Sorry about all that. And so I get 1 over pi minus 2 times, all right, so we, integral of sine t is what? That is negative cosine t minus 1 half t. All right, now what about this one? This is going to be plus 1 fourth cos, ah, 1 fourth sine 2t. From 0 to pi. So, I mean, remember, if you need to, when you integrate that, you can integrate that. You could let u equal 2t use u sub. That's a basic integral you should know how to work. And so, when you calculate all that, you get 4 minus pi over 2 times pi minus There's y bar, well, and then for x bar, so x bar, we don't need to do anything because, see, this thing's symmetrical about the y-axis, so we know x bar is going to be right in the middle there. So x bar we know is just 0, and so our x bar, y bar, is equal to 4 minus pi over 2 times pi minus 2. Uh, ah, is 0, 4 minus pi over 2 times pi minus 2. And so that would be your center of mass. All right. All right, let's move right along. It says the integrals 
the integral over curve C f of x, y, dx is equal to this, and the integral over the over curve C f of x, y, dy is equal to this, are called the line integrals of f along C with respect to x and y. Okay, so remember before it was ds. Now we're doing with respect to dx, dy, and we were integrating with respect to t. It says the original line integral, integral over curve C f of x, y, ds, is called the line integral with respect to arc length. Okay, that's what we're doing. We're busting that curve up into little arcs. Line integrals with respect to x and y can also be evaluated by expressing everything in terms of t. x equals x of t, y equals y of t. dx is uh, x prime t, and dy is y prime t. And I did, uh, I did leave this off. That should be a dt back there. Okay. All right. So, with putting everything in terms of t, and so we would get f of x y dx is equal to this f of x t y t times x prime t dt, and f of x y dy is the integral f of x t y t y prime dt. When I, when line integrals with respect to x and y occur together, we abbreviate by writing this. We've got See, when you have with respect to x, with respect to y, we can write it as the, the line integral p of x, y, dx plus q of x, y, dy. And we're, we're going to do an example of this. It's not, it's not too bad. All right. So let's look at this. It says, it says to evaluate the integral over c, y squared dx plus x dy. All right. And we will call this, we will call this our curve C1. We'll call this curve C2. We got two curves there. So <clears throat> the first thing we want to do is we want to evaluate over, well, we're going to evaluate over the curve C1. Okay, we're going to split it up. So for part A, well, I guess it's not really part A, but it's it's C1. We'll call that part A. All right, so so we need... Well, let's get the equation for this line right here. Okay, going from negative 5, negative 3 to 0, 2. So if you remember back when you were doing lines and planes and all that stuff, you remember you had a formula that said r of t is equal to 1 minus t times r naught plus t times r1 okay and we know that and and also t was between 0 and 1 that's a property that's a little formula you had from back in earlier sections and we can see here that R naught would be negative 5, negative 3. We're starting at negative 5, negative 3. R1 would be 0, 2. And so that's going to give us R of t is equal to 1 minus t times negative 5, negative 3 plus t times 0, 2. Okay, just plugging in the vectors there. R0 and R1. And so then we'll get RT would be, let's see, that would be what? Negative 5, negative 3 minus negative 5T, negative 3T. All right, I take this vector distribute it to the 1, distribute it to the t. And then that would be plus uh, 0t, 2t. And then when you combine everything, that is going to give you 
5t minus 5. Oh, let me write that better. It's going to give you 5t minus 5 and 5t minus 3. Okay. You see that? See, if you distribute the negative, that's 5t minus 5 plus 0, which is 5t minus 5. And then you've got 3t plus 2t is 5t minus the 3. All right. So there's R of T. And so we know we've got X is equal to 5T minus 5. Y is equal to 5T minus 3. And so we've got DX is 5DT. DY is 5DT. And so we have our curve C1 of y squared integrating over the curve c1 y squared dx plus x dy right that's that's what they gave us right here that's our problem and so this is going to be the integral from 0 to 1 okay 0 to 1 of y squared y squared well, what's y? y is 5t minus 3, so that's 5t minus 3 squared. dx, well, what's dx? dx is 5dt plus x, well, what's x? That's 5t, ah, 5t minus 5 times dy. Well, what's dy? dy is 5t, it's 5dt. All right, and so this is going to give us zero to one. Now, look, let's let's do this. Let's let's pull out a five. I'm factoring out this five and this five, and then if I pull that out, that's going to give me twenty-five t squared minus thirty t plus nine plus 5t minus 5 and then dt we're integrating all that with respect to t and so this is going to give us 5 times the integral 0 to 1 that's going to be 25t squared minus 25t plus 4 dt i'll let you do all that you can do all that yourself so that's going to be five times that's going to be 25 over 3t cubed minus 25 over 2t squared plus 4t and that's going from zero to one so obviously you're just going to plug in the one add those fractions up because if you plug zero in you're going to get zero so <laughs> This is going to give you negative 5 over 6. Okay. All right. Now, let's go ahead and do uh, curve C2. So I guess we can call this part B. So let's look at. curve C2. So for this one, let's look and see what we've got. Well, look, we've got x equals 4 minus y squared, right? So we've got x equals 4 minus y squared. Oh, look at this. I've got x in terms of y. And so I could say here, let y equals y. And we're going from negative 3 to 2. See that? We're going from y equals negative 3 to y equals 2. It's this curve here. All right. So now, well, let's see. We need dx. So dx is uh, 4 minus 
2y. Ah, I'm sorry, not 4. It's minus 2y dy. And then here I get dy is equal to, well, derivative that is 1. So 1 dy, which is just dy. So I've got the integral over curve C2, y squared dx plus x dy. So we just plug everything in. That's going to be negative 3 to 2. Let's see, y squared, y is just y, so that's y squared dx. dx is negative 2y dy uh, plus x. x is 4 minus y squared dy. Well, dy is just dy. Okay. And so this is going to give us negative 3 to 2. Uh, let's see, that's negative 2y cubed uh, minus y squared plus 4 dy. And then when we integrate that, we are going to get, uh, what is that, negative, what's that, 1 half y to the 4th minus one-third one-third y cubed plus four y and that's going from negative three to two and i'm not going to go through all that arithmetic but you get 245 over six all right so this is what we got for curve c2 this is what we got for curve c1 now one thing i want to say is Notice that even though both of these curves here have the same endpoint, okay, they have the same endpoint, notice we didn't get the same example, I mean the same answer, okay? So it's not, it's, it's dependent on the path that you take to get from one point to another, okay? And then also direction matters. Notice when we integrated, we integrated from negative 5, negative 3 to 0, 2. If, and, and if you want to, if you're bored or something, trying to, ah. Uh, if you're bored or something and you want to work so, another problem, go in this direction, go from 0, 2 to negative 5, negative 3. Well, what do you think would happen? You would get you would get a positive five sixth. Okay. All right. So there's there's that example. I mean, really, you know, when you when you look at this, you think about it. It's not really that bad. It's not too bad at all. All right. So we can do this in three variables: x, y, z. Okay. It's going to be it's going to be the same thing that we just did. Suppose that C is a smooth space curve given by the parametric equations x equal x of t y equal y t is equal z of t t is between a and b, or by a vector equation r of t is equal to x of t i plus y of t j plus z of t k. If f is a function of three variables that is continuous on some region containing C, then the line integral of f along C with respect to arc length is this. Okay, it's, it's written as a limit here. It's the integral over curve C f of x, y, z, ds, if this limit exists. We, evalu we evaluate it using the formula, so this looks just like we just got a dz dt squared. Or more compactly, f of r of t times the magnitude of r prime t dt. I mean, that not that all this is? If we take the derivative squared and add them up in the square root, and that's just the magnitude, right? Okay, for the special... For the special case, f of x, y, z equals 1, we get the integral 1 ds is just equal to the magnitude of r prime dt, which, which that would be your, that would be the arc length. All right.
So line integrals along C with respect to X, Y, and Z can also be defined, for example, this. And th this right here is just what we did just a while ago, but we were just in X and Y. So you can do it when you, it's in terms of X, Y, and Z. Okay, it's the same thing that we just did. All right. And as with line integrals in the plane, which that's what we just did, we evaluate integrals of the form, this form, by expressing everything x, y, z, dx, dy, dz in terms of the parameter t. Okay, that's just what we did. We just did it in the plane. That was the last example we just worked. All right. All right, so let's look at this. They want us to evaluate this where C is the circular helix given by these equations. So they, they give us the equations here. They tell us T is going from 0 to 2 pi. So I've got dx dt is equal to negative sine T. Uh, dy dt is equal to cosine T. And dz dt is equal to 1. So now we got the integral over curve C of Y sine Z DS. And that is equal to 0 to 2 pi of Y. Well, what's Y? Y is sine T times sine of Z. Well, what is Z? Z is T. See that? Times the integral this squared plus this squared plus this squared. So that's sine squared t plus cosine squared t plus 1 squared dt. And so this is going to give us the square root of 2 from 0 to 2 pi of sine squared t dt. And where did that square root of 2 come from? Well, remember this right here is 1, so 1 plus 1 is 2, so I got square root of 2 and I just brought it out in front. Okay? And so this is going to be square root of 2 from 0, square root of 2, integral 0 to 2 pi. Now we've got to integrate sine sine squared t. That's 1 half times 1 minus cosine 2t dt. And so I'm going to write an extra step. I mean, obviously, when you write this half angle identity formula, just write the 2 under the square root of 2 out here. I'm going to spend an extra step just pulling that out. 0 to 2 pi of 1 minus cosine 2t dt, which that's square root of 2 over 2 times, that's going to be t uh, minus 1 half sine 2t. Whoop. That's 0 to 2 pi. All right. I hope you understand where that is coming from. Let, look, let, let, let me just just so I'll have a clear conscience. And if you already know this, you can fast forward to this part of the video. So to, to integrate that, you would what? Let u equal 2t, du is 2dt. So we got a dt, we got to multiply by 2, multiply by a half. So that's 1 half times the integral cosine u du, which that's going to be 1 half sine u and of course the plus c and then one half sine of 2t plus c so that's where that one half sine 2t comes from okay just to show you that i'm not going to show you that again but that's that's how you integrate that and i know by now you already know that you already know how to do that and so here we get what if you if you evaluate all that, uh, 
Well, you're basically all you're getting is you're getting two pi, right? Two pi times this because the sign of that would be what four pi. That's zero. The sign of zero is zero. So that's and then when you plug the zero in for t, that's zero. So the only number you're getting is the two pi plugging in for t, and so that would give us uh, square root of two times pi, and there's your answer. All right. All right, so let's take a look. We got another example here. It says evaluate the integral over curve C y dx plus z dy plus x dz, where C consists of the line segment C1 from 200 to 345, followed by the vertical line segment C2 from 345 to 340. All right, so let's, uh, let's make a sketch of this and see what we get. All right, so there's X, Y, and Z. And I've got the point 2, 0, 0. So that would be 2, 0, 0. And then the point, uh, what is that, 3, 4, 5. That would be about right in here somewhere. You should know how to plot these. You've already done that. And then the point 3, 4, 0, uh, 3, 4, 0. That would be about right in there. And so we're going from here to here, and then we're going from here to here. Okay, there we have it. So we're going from this point to this point and this point to this point. And see, they tell us the order to go. They say go from this point to this point and go from this point to this point. All right. All right, so let's get an equation for this line here. So that's just the r of t equals 1 minus t times r naught plus t times r1 and you can see here that r naught is equal to 2 0 0 whoop, 2 0 0 and r1 is equal to 3 4 5 and then you do it just like you did earlier like we did in that one example when we did this so i'm not going to go through all that work plugging it in so we get r of t is equal to 2 plus t 4t 5t all right so we get we get x is equal to 2 plus t y is equal to 4t and z is equal to 5t and we've got zero, or our t is between zero and one. Remember, that's from our formula. That's our formula there, and it, in that formula it says t is between zero and one. All right, so now we get dx dt is equal to dt uh, dy dt is equal to four dt and d z oh i'm sorry i'm just finding dx and dy and dz dx dy dz is five dt see for our problem we've got just dx dy and dz all right so now let's plug all that into our integral and I'm gonna I'm just gonna rewrite the integral here again so we can see it and that's gonna be y dx plus z dy plus x dz there's our integral so we're gonna plug everything into there and so we get the integral c y dx plus z dy plus x dz is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 all right and that's going to be uh let's see y is 4t times dx which is just dt so that's 4t times dt 
plus z, which is 5t, times dy, which is 4t, so times 4t, plus x, which is 2 plus t, times dz, which is 5 dt. And so this is 0 to 1. And when you multiply all that out, combine like terms, you get 10 plus 29t dt. You can do that arithmetic. If you can't do that arithmetic, you're probably not going to pass your calculus class. So we get 10t plus 29 over 2t squared and that's going from 0 to 1 and that's going to equal 24.5. Okay, so that's the curve. That's our curve. I guess I should have wrote C1 there. Okay, that's our curve. We'll call this C1, call this one C2. All right. Now let's go for C2. So C2, well, that's going to be, and I'm going to draw a line here so we can differentiate it or tell it apart. So R, remember R of T is equal to 1 minus T times R0 plus T times R1. All right, so what is R0? What is R1? Well, R0 is the point 3, 4, 5. And R1 would be the point 3, 4, 0. Okay, because we're going from here to here. That's what they told us to do. You go from this one to this one. And so we've got R, well, and we're going 0. T is between 0 and 1. I get R0 is, when I say that was 3, 4, 5. And R1 is, what was it, 3, 4, 0, I believe. All right. And so that is going to give us R is equal to, well, that's going to be 1 minus T, 3, 4, 5, plus T times 3, 4, 0. And so I get... I get R of T is equal to, when you do all your arithmetic and stuff, you're going to get 3, 4, 5 minus 5T. I haven't, yeah, I got plenty of room. And so we get X is equal to 3, Y is equal to 4, and Z is equal to 5 minus 5T. So we get dx is equal to 0, dy is equal to 0, and dz is equal to negative 5 dt. So now we have the integral over the curve c, and all I'm doing here is just rewriting the problem down again, plus z dy plus x dz. And that is equal to the integral 0 to 1, of y dx so y dx that's zero plus z dy z dy z times dy that's zero plus x times dz so x times dz that's going to be what negative 15 dt all right and so this is going to be negative 15t from 0 to 1, which that is just negative 15. So the, so the integral over the curve C of y dx plus z dy plus x dz is equal to 24.5, which that's what we got when we went over the first curve, plus negative 15 what we got when we did the line integral over c2 and that is equal to 9.5 and there's your answer all right all right let's look at this
I think we just have a couple more examples left. Yeah, I think we got two examples left. Just hang with me. Suppose that our vector function f equals pi plus qj plus rk is a continuous force field on R3. We define work W done by the force field F as the limit of the Riemann sums. Okay, that's this. This is F times T. Where P sub I is a point on the ith sub arc P sub I minus 1 to P sub I of C and T is the unit tangent vector at the point x, y, z on c. So remember, t is your unit tangent vector. Remember, you you did that uh, in an earlier section, dealt with the unit tangent vector, at the point x, y, z on c. That is, the work is the integral over c of the vector function f dot the unit tangent vector, which you can write it as short as this. If the curve C is given by the vector equation, R, then your unit tangent is what? R prime over the magnitude of R prime, right? Remember that. So the work is from A to B of your vector function F of R of T dot r prime of t over the magnitude of r prime of t all right times the magnitude of r prime of t dt which is just equal to this and and and, and i'm not going to get into everything where what we did here just know that you've got your integral here from a to b of f of rt dot r prime t okay dt which we can abbreviate um, screens, which we can abbreviate as this vector function r dot d vector r dr so we've got a definition, let F be a continuous vector field defined on a smooth curve C given by a vector function R where T is between A and B, then the line segment of F along C is this, which is, you know, this is equal to this, which is equal to this. So, you know, you use, use the easiest one, you know, depending on what you get what they what they give to you all right so i don't know if all that made sense to you but let's let's work some uh let's work some examples and see what we get it says find the work done by the force field f of x y is x squared i minus x y j in a in moving a particle along the quarter circle R of t is cosine t i plus sine t j, where t is between 0 and pi over 2. And, you know, really they didn't have to give us the 0, that t was between 0 and pi over 2, because they did tell us the quarter circle. So, you know, we, we would have already known that. All right, so let's get x, let's get y. So we've got x is equal to cosine t y is equal to sine t and so what are we going to have to do well let's get f of r of t okay f of r of t so here's f so x is what x is cosine right x is cosine so that's going to be cosine squared t and it's yes yeah, just x so times vector i minus x times y so x is cosine t sine t times vector j and then what do we need we need r prime of t so r prime of t would be negative sine t times vector i plus cosine t times 
vector j. All right, so the work done The work done is the integral over the curve C of F dot dr. Okay. All right. So let's see what we get here. So this is going to be 0 to pi over 2 of F of R of T dot R prime of t dt. Okay, see this formula here shows this is equal to this. All right, all right, so what do we get here? Well, this is going to be uh, 0 to pi over 2. Now, look, if you do the dot product of this and this. Well, what is the dot product of that? Remember, it's it's this times this, right? So that's going to be negative cosine squared t sine t plus what? Plus this plus this times this, right? So plus, and a negative times a positive is negative, so minus cosine squared t sine t. So there's your dot product, and this is just what? Negative 2 cosine squared t sine t. So that's this dot product. We just went up there and did it. You could probably you could probably do that in your head. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out that I'm going to pull the negative 2 out. And that would be cosine squared t sine t dt. And I'm not going to go through integrating that, okay? I integrated, I showed you the u substitution. I think it might have been in the first or second example, but I know I did it. And so when we integrate that, that's going to be two thirds cosine cubed t from zero to pi over two. And that's just going to give us negative two thirds. And so there's your answer. All right. All right. So let's look at this. We've got. One more example. This is our last example, and we will be done. All right, so it says evaluate this, where f of x, y, z is equal to this, x, y, i, y, z, j, z, x, k, and c is the twisted cubic given by this. Okay, so there's your, there's your twisted cubic. All right, so... We've got to get, and by the way, that right there is an F. If it doesn't look like it, that's an F. So, so we need to get R. We need to get F. Well, they gave us F, and well, they gave us R also. But we know that R of T. So, what is what is R of T? R of T is T vector I plus T squared vector J plus T cubed times vector K. All right, and that's your X Y Z. And there's R. And we've got R prime of T is I plus 2T I plus 2T J plus 3T squared K. And then we have F of R of T. What's F of R of T? Well, we're plugging everything into here. X, Y, X is T, Y is T squared. So we got T times T squared times vector I. Plus, and then we got Y times Z. Y times Z. That's going to be T squared times T cubed times vector J 
plus, and then we got z times x, z times x, so that's going to be x is t, z is t cubed, times vector k. So I get f of r of t is equal to t cubed times vector i plus t to the Oh, wait a minute, let me say something here. Did I mess up? Y times Z. No, that's T to the fifth times vector J plus T to the fourth times vector K. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything. All right, so we're good. All right, so now we are ready to evaluate this integral. So I've got the integral. That is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of f of r of t dot r prime t dt. All right. Now, when we do the dot product, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to highlight uh, this. So we're doing the dot product of that and that. I'm just highlighting them in red so I can see them better. So remember, it's going to be this times this. So 1 times t cubed is t cubed plus this times this. So that's 2t to the 6 plus... <clears throat> And then we've got this times this. That would be 3t to the 6th. So that's going to be t cubed plus 5t to the 6th. So this is going to be the integral from 0 to 1 of t cubed plus 5t to the 6th dt. All right, and so this is going to give us uh, one fourth t to the fourth plus five over seven t to the seventh from zero to one, and that is going to give you 27 over 28. And there's your answer. So, I mean, you can see for the most part the integrals that we did have to integrate, they weren't. They weren't really that bad. I mean, look at that last one. That was a that was a simple simple function we had to evaluate. <clears throat> but yeah, just just follow your formulas and do all the substitutions and all that stuff. All right. So I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope it helped. Check out my other videos. Give me a like, share, subscribe, comment, and I will see y'all in the next one later.